Today's adventure brings us to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The home of one of the Three Stooges, Larry Fine, as defined by this mural. Supposedly he was born where this building now stands, hence the painting. And that's not the only pop culture icon this city is known for. Rocky Balboa, the silhouette of the statue in front of the Museum of Art. It's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Not only am I getting a wave of emotion over me, but also a little bit of energy. There's something I must do. <laughs> Bow, 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 bow. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty freaking cool. Welcome everyone, Adam. It's a woo here. One of the best things about traveling is being able to scratch items off your bucket list. But there is a second category when you go to places that you rarely visit. And that is the win in Rome moments. And that is what the topic of today's video will be. Got a little, little hungry, a little appetite starting to build up from running those stairs. And that will transition into what's going to happen the rest of this episode. Join me, shall you? A couple miles outside downtown is an intersection by the name of Passy Unk Avenue. And you can see off in the distance, the buildings just protruding there up over the basketball court. The thing that's fascinating about this particular spot and the reason I stopped off here is because on this corner is Gino's steaks and on this corner is Pat's king of steaks. And while there is no shortage of other establishments selling the food of this namesake, these two have been battling it out just a stone's throw from each other for years now. You could even equate it to the Italian Stallion versus Apollo Creed that made this area so famous. Who will win? I'm about to find out right now. The neon sign with crown states that Pats was the inventor and the originator. And this historical marker goes on to say that it began in 1930. No matter which one you choose, Neither of them accept credit cards, so you must have a handful of cash if you want to go home with one of these delicious steaks. These trash cans are painted like basketball players. Look, there's the eyes and teeth and mouth. Oh, he's winking at me. Garbage, first time a garbage can's ever winked at me. With an eye shot of their competition, a little battle of words going here on the side of the wall. Oh, shots totally fired. Above the order counter are faded photographs of lots of different people who have eaten here over its existence in these frames. Some familiar faces. There's Cher, Tony Danza, even Rodney Dangerfield and a friend, and even some older some older photographs on this side and also tucked away on this beam, including Joan Jett. Oh, and Frank Stallone. Check that out. Walking a few feet now and see some of the photographs that's on the wall over there. Taking it a step further, they have placed pictures on the roof as well as the walls. Carson Daly there inside the kitchen. Ooh, Vanna White and Pat Sajak. Nice. As far as history goes, 36 years later, in 1966, this location was built, unlike the counterpart, 1930, across the street. However, 
Geno's has a separate building and a store keeping up nicely with the color scheme. And you can see the reflection of the cheese fries in the front door window. In this overgrown lot is an old mural with paintings of Frankie Avalon, Bobby Rydell, Eddie Fisher, and a newer mural here of Pat and Harry Oliveri, who were the co-founders of the original Pat's King of the Steaks. Right there. Now I just need a local resident to help me consider Crazy Joe? Adam the Woo? From Megapodtastic? How did you know? Oh. Oh, you're wearing the shirt. Uh, yeah. But I knew you before. This We try to pretend like this is an organic meeting, but it, I, I got a hold of you and asked if you wanted to help consume one from Pat's and one from Geno's. Which one do we choose first? Do you have any ideas? Uh, I don't. How about we flip a coin? Do you have a quarter? I don't think I... What? That is a shiny 25 cent piece. Is the reason that you get so excited why they call you Crazy Joe? Well, that and uh, you'd have to talk to my psychiatrist. Heads will be Pat's. Tails will be Gino's. Let's take a look at it. Do it. There it is, there it is, there it is. It looks like it's heads. We're eating Pat's first. Since I'm a little new to this, there's some steps here on how to order you know, one through four, and the prices are as so. Are there any? Copy. No, you got three choices. You can have American, you can have Cheese Whiz, or you could have Provolone. Provolone is my favorite. Okay, That's I'm... the one I recommend, but the Cheese Whiz is also quite popular. There are the options right there, and we there asked. You go. Thanks so much. Got we got it cut in half so we can so we can share. A few condiments available as well. These peppers, ooh, there's even like, even some other peppers down in here and assorted goodness in these vats, even some relish, salt and pepper, and mustard. And this is what we're dealing with. We did not ask for a specific cheese, they just gave us this particular one with the, the cheese whiz type topping right there. You can see it's pretty good size and first impression without biting into it. It looks, it looks rather tasty. You can see all the, the meat down in there and the bread it looks to be a little bit hardened and slightly toasted on the outside. Nice. Even the napkins are promoting the establishment. Probably gonna need plenty of these. All right, grab, oh, yes. grab your side. I'll grab my side. Let's, let's present it, present it towards the camera and we just go in you do the countdown for three two one and we'll go we'll bite it all right three two one a little grease on the hand how greasy is yours very that's like oh, that's how you know it's good it's not greasy it's not right you prefer provolone over the cheese whiz i do now the advantage to the cheese whiz is it really gets in there. It's liquidy, so it gets in there real good. All the gooey goodness right. goes down inside. But I think the provolone tastes a little better. It's not like you're going to get a bad one either way, though. It's not bad. It's been a long time since I had a cheese steak. Safe to say, after eating half of this one and then half from Gino's, I'm going to be probably pretty full. <laughs> but my, my stomach will be happy. Mowing down on this like an animal. That's good. It's getting, it's getting better the more I eat it. Like the first couple bites were okay, but now that it's like working its way around in my mouth, it's starting to, <laughs> the flavor starting to come out. It is flavorful. How many of these from all over? Do you think you've had in your lifetime of living here? More than I can count. There you go. Oh, is that a bird down there? Yeah, there's a bird down there. He wants the leftovers. Oh, he flew off. 
Okay, one down, one to go. Didn't we had, a, we had a little bit left over, a little cheese, a little bit of, a little bit of leftovers. Now oh, that bird's back. He's down there. There he is. You can't have this bird. It's not healthy. Well, it's not healthy for me either, but less healthy for fowl. Pat's even has some hashtags. The original, the inventor. What's that? Making the short hop, skip, and jump over to Gino's now. I think this option, we're gonna go with the traditional up top, but instead of getting the whiz, which we got a moment ago, we're gonna go with the provolone this time. Even some accessories here as well. Relish, cherry peppers. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Gino's. We went for the provolone this time. And interesting trivia, Pat's invented the cheesesteak. Well, they invented the steak sandwich. Gino's was the first to put cheese on it. Oh, they kind of, they perfected it in a way. And it's obviously the cheese is not quite as noticeable as the Wiz version. Provolone is kind of, it's almost like hidden in there. It's not quite as bold. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, noticeably different. The bread is different. The bread is softer here than it has. I'm dripping grease. I like the provolone taste better, but I like how the cheese whiz really gets in there. It yeah, the provolone permeates. is not as not as bold. Definitely a cheesier flavor at Pat's versus Gino. But I think the steak aspect and the bread I like better here. It's tough though, they're both really good. This is like overload today. <laughs> Oh, it's warm. It'd be very difficult to eat two of these, two full ones of these. It's a good thing that we half them because it's a lot of food. But we did see a guy in line who was going back for a second. So there was a guy it in has line. been done. Well, I was talking to him earlier before you got here. He got one from each, then he went to another one down the road, and now he's back to this one. And he would eat a couple bites and then take food to his wife and kids in the car and oh. they would eat the rest of it and he's trying to hit as many as humanly possible, but it keeps coming back to Geno's and Pat's. Well, Geno's and Pat's are the two most famous. If you had to guess how many establishments just in greater Philadelphia do you think there are that have cheesesteaks? It's gotta be hundreds. It's gotta be hundreds. If living here, the first thing you hear people say when they get here is, I gotta go get a cheesesteak. That's me. Yeah. First thing. Besides, I ran, I ran the Rocky Steps, so I earned it. I earned it. I made it to the top. Is that the first thing you would do? Get off the truck and be like, uh, I want to get the local cuisine, whatever it is? Yeah. I call it my win in Rome moments. <laughs> Someone getting shocked back there? Sounded like a bug zapper. I don't see one though. No bugs or no zappers. I'd like to know where to get a big vinyl sticker like that. It's on the electrical box here around the side. Originally, I was gonna get one of each of the steaks and eat them at either or location. You know, have both of them and do a taste test, let's say at this table. It's a good thing I didn't because the rule states that you're only allowed to eat food from this place at this table. So I think the way we did it by flipping the coin is probably probably the best option. Peeking in the window at this shop, the door is locked currently. They do have some shot glasses, a cardboard stand up there, a motorcycle, and some t-shirts if the mood hits you. And now for a little natural ambiance. Just listen.
that's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. It helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future endeavors and uploads I will be going on. And take it a step further, ring that notification bell. You can find me at megapodtastic.com or megapodtastic on YouTube. Self-promotion plug. Shameless. All the old school folk, they say these are the best. But so, the best? The <laughs> best. But some of the newer people, they have other opinions. Yeah, my dad's generation couldn't beat these. The young kids today, they're like, yeah, that's for the tourists. I'm a tourist. I'm going with your dad's generation. What's your favorite cheesesteak in Philly? I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. A lion or a, some sort of tiger or a bear. Oh my. Oh, he just flew off. I'm wondering how he enjoyed the leftovers. It's a relic. You have to test it out. Test it out. Is there a dial tone? There is not. Fail. How about we flip a coin? Do you have a quarter? I don't think I... What?